You don't need magic to disappear for a while because Firestone tires were built for ticking off mile markers. Firestone Destination LE3 tires. For 70,000 miles of exploring, whatever you drive, drive a Firestone. Craig Tate is a second-generation tire dealer with a passion for the tire business. A former college football player, Craig took over his father's tire dealerships with his brother in 2000 and named it Tate Boys Tire and Service. Over the years, the boys grew it to seven locations in the greater Tulsa, Oklahoma area. And in 2018, Tate Boys was honored with the Tire Review Top Shop Award, being named the best tire dealer in North America. Today, Craig is a consultant for Sun Auto Tire and Service, working with the businesses on processes and improving the customer experience. Welcome to Johnny G and Friends. I'm Johnny G, and on today's podcast, we're joined by my good friend, Craig Tate. Craig, welcome to the show. Well, it is a pleasure, Johnny, to be one, be your friend, and two, to be on your podcast. Uh, Well, thank you so kindly. You know, we first met uh, about six years ago. I was working on a market research project uh, doing a tire panel for a company called GFK. And and I distinctly remember, Mr. Tate, that uh, after making the presentation to the entire group, you came up to me and you said, gee, I, I don't think I'm going to sign up for your panel right now because I, I don't trust you 100% yet. <laughs> Did you tell me that? Well, I think um, it's a little bit different story that I remember, but that was kind of <laughs> along the same lines. How I right. remember is that absolutely you came in to um, a great group of operators, great, gave this Everyone knew you. I mean, I was new to the Bridgestone world back then. I had, you know, I, that's my first time meeting you. Great presentation. And I think you came up to me and goes, and go, hey, Craig, here's the deal. Everyone has signed up. You're the only one that hasn't signed up. I want to know why. And I think that's when I said, well, I just don't trust you yet. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, yeah, that's probably exactly what happened. So, uh, but now look at us today, six years later. I mean, uh, if, uh, you know, you or me needs kidneys, we'll share each other's kidneys, right? 100%. I, I, yeah. Best of friends since then. Brothers. Exactly. So, really twin brothers. I mean, if you think about it, we could be twins. Yeah. <laughs> so you and your brother, Chuck, uh, took over the family business uh, from your dad, uh, Bob. <laughs> in 2000. So tell yes, me sir. about your dad and, and, you know, what did he teach you that still remains in the business today? Oh gosh, you know, it, rooted in our fundamentals and our foundation of the company today is the same thing that we grew up on as kids. So my dad um, was a simple country boy, farm boy, grew up milking cows, to be honest with you, went to the Marine Corps, uh, served his time, uh, came back, and there was a company called Otasco. And if you're from the Midwest, you might remember them. But basically, they were the Walmart before the Walmart. They sold tire and auto service. So it stood for Oklahoma Tire and Supply Company. And they had 180 stores, Arkansas, Missouri, uh, a few down in Texas and in Oklahoma. So he started to work for them in the early, oh, late 60s when he was down with the Marine Corps. And uh, ended up being the store manager here in Bartlesville. Uh, That was hometown. That was home base for us. Uh, Managed the store for 20 years. And of course, as we all know, Walmart put a lot of those businesses out out, and that's what happened. So he retired in 86 and then started Bob Tate's Tire and Service in 88. I was still in high school. Uh, My brothers were in college and, uh, you know, I was at home and it was a two bay garage and we pumped gas. You know, that was back in full service. Um, but you know, some real things that stood out to me, my dad was a really good businessman, but he was an old school businessman where the customer was always right. He preached that when we were little bitty kids. So I'm a, so there's five kids and you know, I'm a big guy and there's four brothers and I'm the smallest brother and we were all active, but it was a family business because we would go down and help my dad. So he'd get in a shipment of flying old bicycles. If you remember those, and we would all go down. Yeah, we would all go down, put them together uh, so they were ready to sell. Uh, delivery, 
big kids. Of course, he's going to use us for delivery. But something that stood out for me, we always did family dinner. And Sunday, sure enough, we're sitting there around the table uh, after church and uh, phone rings and it's a customer. And <clears throat> with I could hear what was going on, but I'd answer the phone and said, hey, Jay, how are you? Oh, gosh, that's horrible. Basically, a customer called on a Sunday and his freezer just went out and he had a full side of beef that was just put in the week before. And without hesitation, on a Sunday when we're closed, he goes, I'll go get your freezer. We'll be up in the next hour. Without hesitation, we all loaded up, went and got the freezer, took it up there. And not only did we, we could have just dropped it off. But I remember it was just unspoken that we're going to do everything for around the customer. So we loaded that free, unloaded the old freezer, took it out, brought the new freezer in, helped them load it, and then took the old freezer to dispose of. And there was nothing, none of us ever thought, and I look back on that, none of us ever thought, God, we're doing it on a Sunday. It was just, we had to take care of the customer. So that was really foundational for me is that you're going to take care of the customer. And also you're going to take care of your employees the exact same way. He stressed that all the time. So great business guy. There's still people today that bought their first set of tires from my dad back in the 70s that are still customers of Take Boys today. Customer service at its best, let me tell you. That's a, that's a lesson you don't learn in college. Nobody teaches that one in college, you know? Oh, no, 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 no. In fact, you know, um, my first day of work at, at, take, at Bob Tate's Tire uh, for my dad, I graduated from college and finance and showed up in slacks and a white shirt. I'm from a private university. I'm going to change the world. He goes, what are you doing? You're going to ruin those clothes in the first 30 minutes. Go home and change more clothes. You're starting in the back. <laughs> okay. So, uh, that's yeah, just, you know, I mean, it was just, uh, it was non-negotiable. You take care of the yep. customer. Uh, that's awesome. So your brother, Chuck, he told me he was a, or you told me he was a pitcher for the San Francisco Giants. Yeah. And he tells me, no, I wasn't a pitcher. I was a thrower. I said, what's the difference? He said, well, throwers make hundreds of thousands of dollars and pitchers make millions of dollars. But he actually played for the San Francisco Giants, right? Yeah, yeah. He was, uh, he was a pitcher. I always call him a pitcher. Uh, but since, he's, uh, since he, he always considered him a thrower, he didn't have a lot of fastball. I mean, he had a fastball. Just didn't have a, you know, a real great curveball. But, yeah, yeah, he was a pitcher in the farm leagues for the San, San Francisco Giants for about four and a half years. So, but you played football for uh, Tulsa University. And, and yeah. what position did you play? And, and how were your teams during the years that you played? Well, yes, the University of Tulsa, Golden Hurricanes, just right down the road. Uh, played the most uh, athletic position on the field, defensive end. So that's yeah. what, uh, you know, there's a lot of argument there, whether the quarterback, you know, how I banter back and forth with some of my friends, uh, you know, my, uh, but yeah, deep defensive end, you know, uh, played at junior college, my first two years and then transferred into Tulsa. So my junior year was 91 and, uh, 10 and two season, uh, ranked mm -hmm. in the top 20, uh, finished, uh, winning the, uh, freedom bowl against Marshall Falk and the San Diego state Aztecs. So wow. that was a big win for us. Uh, we had a big win. Uh, in fact, it's still called the Miracle, Miracle on 11th Street, which uh, Skelly Stadium sits on 11th Street in Tulsa. So that's why it's called that. But Texas A&M, they were uh, the number eight ranked team in the country. And they mm -hmm. came in and uh, we beat them. And then two weeks later, we played the Miami Hurricanes with Dennis Erickson was a coach and Gino Toretti was quarterback. And it was 6-3 at halftime, and we thought we had a chance. They had us by a field goal and a couple fumbles late in the third quarter, early fourth quarter, and we ended up getting beat, I think, by 16 or 17. Of course, they went – Gino went on to win the national title. I mean, uh, the Heisman. And, uh, of course, uh, Miami Hurricanes won the national title. So we had a really good team. That's awesome. So how did your discipline as an athlete influence the way you operated your tire business? Oh, gosh, it was uh, really everything because uh, I wasn't the most talented guy. 
So I'm never going to see, you know, when I, I was joking about playing the most athletic position on the football field, hard work. And that's the thing that really my dad always taught us is that you can't control everything. A lot of things you can't control, especially in the business world, right? You can't control what your competitors are doing. You can't control what the economy is. The one thing you can do is your work ethic. You can control that. And just like in football, I out, I, I prided myself on outworking everybody in preparation and then also an effort giving. And then also I was a student of, of the game, spent a lot of time on tapes. You know, now they've got all the uh, scouting software that break down everything. You can get every tendency from every opponent that you play in every situation, and you can have it in a printout. Back then, it was just a matter. You had the old fast-forward, rewind, pause, play, and watched a lot of tape to get tendencies. And then I used those to my advantage. You know, for instance, playing the defensive end, you're lined up against offensive tackle. The biggest guys, you know, I played about 270 to 275. But those offensive tackles are 330. So what do you start looking for? Is you start looking for those offensive linemen to get tired or late in the second quarter, late in the fourth quarter, and they'll start giving you whether it's a run or pass, which helps you to have the advantage. So if you see a lot of weight out on their hand, it's a run. He's coming at you. He's getting lazy. If he has a lot of weight back, it's a pass. So those things that I picked up on football that helped me be successful, ultimately helped the team be successful, I do transfer those over into, into the business world. It's the little things that matter. The details matter because in football, there's 80 plays in a game usually, 60 to 80 plays that you're going to play on defense, 60, 80 plays on, deep, on offense. So everyone, I mean, you know, let's look at those jerseys behind you. You're a football guy. Every one of those plays – determine and help contribute win or lose you either win the play or you lose the play as a player in the in the in the business world that's exactly what happens every customer interaction matters to the big picture of winning and there's a whole different you know you you can define winning but at the end of the day keeping that customer for a lifetime and making them a raving fan is winning you know, back in the late 60s, when I worked in a tire store, uh, I, I was taught the five steps to a tire sale. And the first step is when the customer pulls up, OK, don't wait behind the counter. Walk out there, open up the door, you know, go out and greet him. Maybe you see a, a bumper sticker on his car. Maybe he's a Chicago White Sox fan. You talk about the game last night. You start to develop a relationship. You walk around the car, right? You're checking to see does he need two tires, four tires, et cetera. So, so that's, you know, sort of the same thing. As a football player, you can be waiting on that running back where you can aggressively go after him. 100%. 100%. They truly are the lifeblood of the business. And, you know, we exactly what you just said, you know, the five steps of the tire sale, we kind of changed that. But, yeah, the, 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 the greeting is, is huge. And we always use this analogy in training. If Johnny G was going to come to my house with a check to pay my mortgage, not only would I meet you out in the parking lot because I love you and you're a brother of mine, but I dang sure would be meeting you with a handshake because you got a check for me to help pay for my mortgage. So that's yeah, how, that's at the end of the day, go meet the customer. It's neutral ground too. Customers feel more comfortable. And it's, you know, I think someone wrote a book about this, but it's, but he didn't reference tires, but it's not about the tires. I think the name of the book was it's not about the coffee. And I think everyone can probably know what I'm referring to. It's not about the tires. It's emotional engagement with the customer. So right, so right. So uh, I remember a few years ago, you came back, uh, came out here, I should say, with Christina. <laughs> and the four of us uh, got together. We played golf. It was uh -huh. on a Saturday. Uh, it was crowded as heck. And there was, uh, it was a par five. There was somebody on the green to force them. Then about 100 yards out, there was another foursome. And then we had just hit our drive, so we weren't going anywhere. And I saw you, and you kind of took your phone like this, and you're looking at it and whatever. And I'm going, Craig, what, what are you looking at? And you go, well, I'm looking at my tire stores. And I said, oh, to see how many tires you have sold? You go, no. Uh, what your car count is? You go, no. You said, bay time. You, you told me something that no tire dealer has ever told me that you were looking at bay times. Can you explain to our audience what, what, what that's all about? Yeah, so 
Uh, absolutely. And I do remember that I think you and I both probably had 320 yard drives. That's my <laughs> recollection. I'm getting a little older in my days, but I think we're right in the middle. No, yep. bay, bay times were a huge, are a huge KPI for us. We do measure everything. So we, uh, have a bit, we have a business intelligence tool and it might, and we have it absolutely live, meaning we get live data. Every store manager and above has live data to their phone and we can measure everything at all times. But bay times are a big one for us. And what I mean by bay times is once again, it comes back to outworking everybody. Because if somebody comes in, if Johnny G comes in for an oil change and four tires, as soon as that ticket is printed and you're in the store waiting, you become flagged as a waiting customer. So the time starts and we have stopwatches and we've got big screens in the waiting room that have average wait time. So if we see 100 customers in a day, which is average customers, 60 of them are going to wait on it. So that means you become a waiting customer and the time starts and that bay time does not stop until that last, that ticket is closed out and we hand you the keys and target time for vehicles in the tire lanes, which are doing the oil changes, all the tire services, uh, the rotates, the flats, the inspections, all of that target time is 30 minutes. So we've got to run fast. You know, we're not going to just sit around and uh, make customers drop off their vehicles and have ride arrangements, which we're happy to do. But at the end of the day, if they want to wait in the building, they know that we're not going to just take their time for granted, right? Because time, I mean, there's only 24 hours in a day. So why should well, but, you somebody know, have to wait four hours? That's the first thing that I saw when I visited your stores. The first thing I saw that separated you from everybody. And I'm serious. I mean, you guys separate yourself. The fact that you can, you know, go on your uh, internet and and as a customer and see all your different locations and what the average bay time is. I mean, nobody does that. And then you can actually get it down to the employee, right? If you know one guy's slacking oh, yeah. a little bit, you you, you okay. know whether that one employee you you can be golfing with Johnny G as uh, <laughs> two thousand miles away, and you can actually know whether a guy in Bay Four is slacking or not. It's, it's a big deal because we put those bait times into some of our analysis of efficiencies because we do call the tire lane. Uh, we call them the pit crew. They got a crew chief that runs that okay. the, those tire lanes. So it is. And then we can tell you average time for every technician that's working in those tire lanes individually. And then we can also drill down and say, okay, if he's got a high bait time, what's going on? Is it on oil changes? Is it tires? Is it balance? Is it rotate? Then it might flag, hey, this guy might need some more training. Let's go to his training file and figure out what he's missed or what he. So when they come in, and the only way they get certified and get released, to start, and it takes about 90 days once they get through their mentorship, because there's a mentor, right? We've all had mentors. Just because you're in the pit crew doesn't mean that you're not going to have a mentor and a coach. But it's all time. They do not get certified until they pass and there's about 30 things, how to mount a tire, dismount a tire with DPMS, without rotates, you know, all that stuff. But there's a time to it. Minute and a half for this. Great. If you do it efficiently, three times, no scratches, nothing, you get certified, you move on to the next. We do tire rodeos and they love, and the record, Johnny, and this is how our tire rodeo is. Now, this is not TPMS removal. This is the old school right. rip the stem and go. Right. But four tires. Two pit crew members, as soon as the vehicle leaves the cement, time starts. Four tires, dismount, mount, new stems, balance, put back on the vehicle, torque to specification, and they got to be correct PSI, otherwise we deduct them. And as soon as it hits back down, the company record is three minutes, 46 seconds. Unreal. Two guys. Two guys. Everybody. Yep. Three now, how do you minutes? get that? Yeah. Yeah, and customers love it. The really, the really cool thing with this is that when you're working hard, you know, we shoot for 30 minutes. But one of our stores, the company record for tires in a day was 270. And uh, 270 what times, 270 tires, one day. In one day. One day. 
And the average wait time was 40 minutes that day. And uh, they did 140 customers. I think 70 of them uh, were waiting customers. But yeah, 270 tires in the waiting, the average wait time that day was 40 minutes. So when you run that fast, though, you got to have a plan and a process behind it. So with all these numbers, because you're a number guy, with all your numbers, do you then take these measurements and sit down with the various tire busters or uh, the pit crew guys and and put your stores up against each other to say, hey, oh, what's yeah. going on? Yep, yep, absolutely. They uh, they love to compete. I mean, that is, that is uh, I mean, you know us. I know you. You love to compete. That's uh, in our culture is that at the end of the day, you know, every morning we start our day by a morning huddle and we talk about the numbers and we talk about what's important. And it's all about also bringing everyone together before they start the shift, just like Tom Brady does before he takes his offense out on the field. This is what yep. we're going to do today. Hey, this is what we didn't do good last series, but this is what we got to improve on. But all together, we're here to win. But yeah, so we drive a lot of competition. Um, you know, I know what managers will do. We'll get creative. Whoever has as the pit crew members, whoever has the best bay time through Friday at five o'clock gets Saturday off. So oh, wow. or he'll say, yeah, or he'll say, okay, the top three pit crew members today's time doesn't have to stay in clean. You can get out of here right at close because who likes to stay in clean, but yeah, we're going to yeah, clean yeah. our stores, right? We're going to have clean stores. So it's just, Those you know, are- it's just really finding people because let's be honest, we're in tire and auto service. We're in retail. We better make it fun. So we find ways to make it fun and competitive. Yeah, you get me so excited. I almost want to go back to work in the store. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's great. When everything goes right, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, TT, my fondest memory of your brother, Chuck, uh, was several years ago. We were at a Burt Brothers grand opening up in Salt Lake City, Utah. It was late at night, and we are playing cribbage in Wendell Burt's backyard. And I'm talking about 1030 at night. And we're drinking yeah. his favorite Speedy Creek. OK, he loves Speedy Creek. And uh, by the way, he kicked my butt in cribbage. Uh, uh, you know, he was an athlete. He, he was a competitive was guy. And a also, competitor. Huh? Oh, yeah. He uh, he loved to compete. So, buddy, it was a shock for all of us when Chuck passed away so suddenly. I mean, can you talk about how this was for you? Yeah, it was tough. Uh, still is. You know, miss him every day. Uh, he, uh, uh, you know, big brother, uh, really was my mentor in a lot of things. You know, I had three uh, – I've got – you know, three older brothers, and they were all mentors in different ways. Chuck and I worked together side by side. We built the business together. Um, And, you know, a lot of stuff, when I say mentor, I mean, he, 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 he mentored me, Uh, you know, coming out of college, he was a little bit older. He was there a couple of years before me, taught me work ethic, even in sports as well that rolled over. But yeah, you know, his, his, his legacy, along with my dad's, you see it every day. Uh, it's, I mean, it's something that once again is institutionalized in the foundation of this culture. Wow. So how are you carrying out his Chuck's legacy today? You know, um, it's pretty easy because I mean, we've got long tenured employees, so they all work side by side with them. But, you know, I think the biggest thing is that, um, our highest award, uh, that we give out Each year we have a Christmas party. We bring the whole company in. We treat them to a night. We give a whole bunch of awards. But the most distinguished is going to be the Chuck Tate, Tate Boys Tire and Service Employee of the Year Award. And it's, you know, we have top salesmen and top wrench producers and, you know, all the other stuff that are just measurable, tangible items. With the Chuck Tate Award, anybody can win it because it's not, and it's really all about passion to serve. Anyone that knew Chuck knew that he thought of others before himself and everything. And there are stories to produce it. So that honor for those employees is a big deal, you know, because the stories behind it, our employees still tell these stories is that, you know, a Wasso store in Owasso, Oklahoma, it's raining out, you know, it's spring, like we're, you know, it's beautiful today, but we, you know, we're seeing a lot of rain. And lady came in and it was pouring down rain and goes, gosh, 
I just had a flat out on the highway. And this is at five o'clock in the evening. So five o'clock traffic. And the nicest guy, one of your employees stopped by in the dead rain and took him 10 minutes to change. It got completely soaked and then didn't even charge me and told me to come up here and you guys would fix it for free. They're like, you know, the manager was like, that's great to hear. We love hearing that about our employees. Any idea who it was so we can make sure we identify them? Well, I don't know. He was driving, driving a red Ford and, and big guy, blonde hair. They're like, Ben goes, well, that was the owner. <laughs> she goes, what? <laughs> yeah, that was the owner. So the owner, I mean, but just those type of stories. He did that stuff all the time. He did not care in any which way that he could help the customer or others. He was going to do it. So those type of things is what that award's about. And when someone wins that, it is a badge of honor. So that's just something that's going to carry forward for, you know, for forever. But those are stories that you hear about, Chuck, not only in the business world, but in church and, you know, just in the community. So he, he you know, his legacy is that a passion to serve others. And it was not fake. It was true. I remember I remember coming in for his funeral and that gymnasium of that high school was just packed to the, you know, to the gills. And it was uh, it was such a wonderful uh, thing where all the brothers got up there and, and his children to talk about, you know, their dad and, and whatever. And it's, you know, obviously uh, sad when you lose somebody sure. so uh, so great so early on in life but uh, th that's that's just beautiful those stories you shared with me and uh, you know just uh, I, I wish I would have got to know them even longer than the time I did know them. yeah yeah well he thought the world of you Johnny so the short term that you guys knew each other I know he uh, came back and talked about that uh, cribbage game and of course first thing he said I won <laughs> I'm like well, <laughs> geez, a competitor too because along with that golf game I remember us on that golf game I think we left this out and I you know this new this one I really knew that you and I were gonna be tight because I remember you being up three strokes on about 12 or 13 You're, you you were playing really well and then I started to crawl back and I won a hole so now I'm down to now it's 16. I want another one. So I remember going into 18. I was playing for the tie. I'm down one. And if you remember, I was up there. I was going to, you know, I'm not a very good golfer, but I was going to two putt and was going to make par. And you were on just on the green. And it was one of those huge Arizona greens. It was a Nick Faldo course there at the J at the JW. You got a 60 foot putt. So I'm already <laughs> counting. He's laying there three. I'm going to two putt for four. I'm winning. We're going to overtime. Baby, I got a chance. I'm back. And you sunk that putt, and we tied, and the game was over. Just like that. <laughs> you never I remember know. when you hit Once it, I just went, that's got a chance. <laughs> and it just went. <laughs> <laughs> Once in a while, you get lucky in life, you know? Oh, uh, competitor. Competitor. Uh, so, Mr. Tate, you sold uh, Tate Boyce Tire and Service last October to Sun yep. Auto Tire. Why did, yep. why did you decide to sell your business? You're not even 50 yet, are you? <laughs> Not yet. I feel 60. But uh, yeah, so, you know, in the market today, there's there's consolidation going on. And, uh, you know, uh, Sun Tire and Auto or Sun Auto and Tire was just the right fit. Uh, you know, we've had several people come in uh, and uh, several suitors, a uh, couple LOIs given out over the last five years. But at the end of the day, What's important to me and what was important for Chuck and my dad is how's the culture of the company moving forward, right? Because, uh, I mean, that's, I mean, it's not about me. It's about the people that have helped stand this business up and make it successful. So it was the right fit. And we thought it was the right time. And uh, talked to Chuck's widow, uh, talked to family members. And at the end of the day, we thought it was the right fit. And uh, you know what? So far, so good. Great. Now, so what are you doing today? Well, working on the golf game. So when I come back out in Arizona and I don't get beat again. Uh, <laughs> but now I'm working with Sun Tire, uh, Sun Auto and Tire as well. Uh, really from a consulting side, uh, looking at it from a uh, process, from a strategic side, really just helping any way that I can. I still got gas in the tank, Johnny. I mean, you, you know that. My day starts early. I love running hard, but I love being in the game. So... 
You know, my whole thing is that I do think this industry from retail tire is so underserved when it comes to customer experience and professionalism. That's not a knock on anybody. I'm not, there, there's great dealerships out there. There's great operators. But then the day, the perception from the customer is what? Grease monkeys, you know? So I would love more than anything to bring in across the board, truly think of the tire and auto service as the Ritz Carlton's, right? Because it's, we're serving people. So right. bring the industry standard up, make it to where people can come in here and make great careers and find those people with high emotional intelligence that love to serve, you know, kind of like the Chick-fil-A model. You know, they've got it figured out. They have yeah. elevated fast food to where it's not about the chicken, but it's about the, it's about the customer. It's about the experience. So I don't feel like my work is done mm -hmm. yet. Uh, and uh, I think this is a good vehicle, a good avenue for maybe to still keep that work going forward. Well, listen, keep that fire in your belly. And uh, I, I really appreciate the fact that we have such a good friendship. And, uh, and even though uh, we're, we're both kind of semi-retired from the tire world, you know, we still get together and play golf and, and get together. And, and that means a lot to me. And it means a lot that you uh, wanted to be part of my podcast, Johnny G and Friends. And I thank you so much for taking time out of your hectic schedule to be a part of this uh, series. And, and just thanks so much for doing that. Oh, gosh. It's truly my pleasure. It's an honor to be here. You don't need magic to disappear for a while because Firestone tires were built for ticking off mile markers. Firestone Destination LE3 tires for 70,000 miles of exploring. Whatever you drive, drive a Firestone.